ESPN boxing analyst and former HBO boxing commentator and pundit and analyst veteran Max Kellerman says that we are now in a new golden era of heavyweight boxing. Now, those of you who are longtime subscribers will know that I've been saying this for years. This is a video I did back in 2015. I think it was shortly after the AJ Dylan White fight, but I was saying it in several other videos long before I did this video in December 2015. Long before. This was just the first video I did with Golden Age of Heavyweight Boxing in the title, but there were numerous videos going back months and months before this where I was saying the same thing. We're entering a new Golden Age. And just to put it in perspective, in 2015, yeah, it, it was actually before the Dylan White fight that I made this. This was December 3rd. The Dylan White fight took place on December 12th, 2015. So all the way back then, and even before that, I think as early as 2014, I was talking about we're, at, we're about to enter a new golden age of heavyweight boxing. I was widely ridiculed. People were saying it's a load of nonsense. This era is going to be rubbish. It, these guys wouldn't last one round with most of the 90s heavyweights and the 70s heavyweights. Total nonsense about a golden era. Well, now we have experts, uh, veteran analysts in the mainstream boxing press saying the exact same thing. It took them long enough. Now, I don't want to give myself too much of a pat on the back because really and truly, anybody who's been around watching boxing for long enough, for several decades, anybody who's old enough to have lived through and remembered the last golden era of heavyweight boxing, the 1990s, anybody who's old enough to have remembered that and was paying attention to what was going on back then and paying attention to what was going on over the last few years in the heavyweight division, it would have been very easy to spot the fact that we're moving into a new golden era. So I'm not trying to make myself out to be any kind of genius. All I, was do all I am is somebody who is old enough to have remembered what a golden era looks like and how it comes about and be, you know, have the wherewithal to actually pay attention to the signs that we're moving into another golden era. It doesn't take a genius mind to figure it out, okay? It just takes somebody to actually be paying attention and to take the rose-tinted glasses off. So, yeah, Max Kellerman can see it. I saw it years ago that this was coming. And in years to come, many people who are poo-pooing this era of heavyweight boxing, because there'll still be people in the comment section of this video right here saying, it's not a golden era. Just because Kellerman says it, it doesn't make it true. Make it true. Listen, even during the golden eras in the 90s and the 70s, there were naysayers. There were people saying, ah, it's not as good as the, uh, the old days. So there's always going to be naysayers. But I'm telling you now, in years to come, in 10, 20, 30 years to come, there will be people looking back on this era right now saying, oh, that was the golden age. I wish heavyweight boxing today was like it used to be back in 2018, 2019, 2020, 21. I wish it was like it was back then. That was the good old days. That's when you had great talents. You had the Gypsy King. You had Wilder. You had AJ. You know, you had uh, the Dylan Whites of the world, the Big Baby Millers, the Luis Ortizes. You had all these guys, the Joey Parkers. There were so many great fights. Not just the elite level guys, even the lower tier guys were involved in great fights, classic wars, rivalries, beefs. This is what makes the heavyweight division interesting. This is what you had in the 70s. A bunch of different rivalries and different beefs and trilogies and all kinds of stuff going on. Upsets as well. The, this is one of the things that categorize, that, uh, yeah, I guess categorizes, if, if that's the right word to use, probably not. But that's one of the things that uh, really characterizes, not categorizes, excuse me. That's one of the things that characterizes a golden era in heavyweight boxing is upsets. Muhammad Ali, or Cassius Clay as he was at the time, he started his era in the 60s with an upset. Muhammad Ali, or Cassius Clay at the time, he wasn't supposed to beat Sonny Liston. Sonny Liston was a big, a big 
uh, sorry, favorite in that fight. Oh yeah, Liston was a big favorite against Cassius Clay. Clay had just been dropped by Henry Cooper. Henry Cooper, RIP, no disrespect to the dead, but the way he was viewed is he was somebody who couldn't even lace Sonny Liston's boots. And Henry Cooper had a good left hook. Sonny Liston's best punch was a left hook. If, if Henry Cooper is dropping Cassius Clay and nearly knocking him out, then what's Liston going to do when he lands his left hook? So Clay going into that fight was a huge underdog. I think he was like 7-1, to 8-1 to one underdog against Sonny Liston. He wasn't supposed to win that fight. That wasn't in the script. But Cassius Clay, otherwise known as Muhammad Ali, he didn't read the script. He beat the odds. He shocked the world. And that's what he was saying after the fight. And that began a new era, an era which nobody foresaw or very few people foresaw. People felt like Liston was going to, I remember veteran journalist Bud Eisenberg in a documentary about Muhammad Ali saying that he thought that Sonny Liston would be world heavyweight champion for life. <laughs> that is how monolithic a champion Sonny Liston was. That's how intimidating he was. That's how dominating he was. That many of the boxing press felt like this guy can't be beat. They saw him rip through the heavyweight division, the top contenders, and eventually the champion at the time, Floyd Patterson. Frightening the life out of everybody. They didn't think that this cocky kid from Louisville, Kentucky, could beat Liston. But that's exactly what he did. An upset started the Muhammad Ali era. And of course, the Muhammad Ali era was punctuated by a second upset that he scored in Zaire, against Sonny Liston incarnate, Sonny Liston's apprentice, George Foreman. Again, going into the fight, a big underdog. I don't think he was as big an underdog against Foreman as he was against Liston, correct me if I'm wrong. But still an underdog, upset the odds once again. This is what characterizes, one of the things that characterizes golden eras, these big upsets that happen in golden eras. Same thing in the 1990s. The 1990s was kicked off with Mike Tyson losing to Buster Douglas in one of, if not the biggest upset in boxing history in any way in February 1990. That's how the, the 90s, the golden era of heavyweights in the 1990s started off with the biggest upset in heavyweight boxing history. That's how it started off. And then later on in that era, you had other big upsets. And more minor upsets too. Holyfield destroyed Douglas. That wasn't really a big upset, to be fair. He was nearly upset himself, Holyfield, when he fought Burt Cooper. That would have been a huge upset. <laughs> he eventually lost to Riddick Bowe, which wasn't a massive upset. Came back after Bowe had had two defenses and beat Bowe in the rematch. Which was an upset. That was an upset. Many people did not expect, or most people did not expect Holyfield to be beating Riddick Bowe in the rematch. That was an upset. I remember staying up, watching that fight live. Lennox Lewis, Barry McGuigan, Frank Bruno. Oh, sorry, not Frank Bruno. Lennox Lewis, Barry McGuigan, Frank Warren were in the ITV studio. And obviously they had the fan man who gate crashed the party halfway through that fight. Crazy fight. Crazy night, great night. It was at Caesar's Palace in the open air um, parking lot. Was it the parking lot or the tennis courts? I think it was the parking lot, wasn't it, at Caesar's Palace uh, where they used to have the fights. So, yeah, um, the 90s was just full of upsets. Obviously, they had Lennox Lewis versus Oliver McCall was an upset. When Lewis knocked out Razor Ruddock in a WBC final eliminator, I don't think the result was a massive upset. Although I think Razor Ruddock was a favorite going into the fight, but not a massive favorite. It was the manner of the it was the manner of the victory, which was so shocking because very few people felt like Lennox Lewis would not raise a Ruddock out. The people who felt like Lewis would win thought he he would win on points. They didn't think he'd be knocking Razor Ruddock out in two rounds at Earl's Court. So 
That was a big moment in the 1990s for heavyweight boxing. A shocking result. Again, Lewis McCall was a shocking result. And then, of course, in November 96, the 9th of November 1996, after Mike Tyson had come out of prison, recaptured the heavyweight title, beating Frank Bruno, then beating Bruce Seldon, he looked on course to start a new reign of terror, as they called it at the time. But that's not what happened. He fought Evander Holyfield in a fight which was supposed to be a routine defense against the faded ex-champion. But he got his clock cleaned. He got battered in that fight against Evander Holyfield. A fight which was supposed to happen, happen several years earlier, by the way. But Mike Tyson ended up catching a charge. And so the fight couldn't go ahead. Well, actually, no. It was initially supposed to happen when Holyfield was Tyson's mandatory, but, but Tyson then lost to Buster Douglas with Holyfield ringside. Then Holyfield fought Douglas. Then eventually, uh, Holyfield was supposed to fight Tyson when Holyfield was undisputed champion, but that's when Tyson caught a charge and went to prison. So, yeah, Holyfield beat Tyson when they eventually fought November 9th, 96. Another huge upset. So this is what, characterizes one of the things that characterizes golden errors is big upsets all the way through an upset is an upset an upset is something that most fans can't foresee so when i hear people coming up to me saying oh hat man i can't see anybody beating joshua oh hat man i can't see anybody beating fury it doesn't matter what you can see that's what an upset is <laughs> don't you get it you see this is why i say you know what's going to happen because history repeats itself. If you live long enough, you realize history repeats itself. And if you're paying attention, you'll see the signs of history repeating itself. It's not going to be the exact same time every time history repeats, the exact same thing every time history repeats itself, but it's going to be pretty similar. Certainly in a sport like boxing, where it doesn't change that much. It changes, of course, but not that much. It's essentially the same format that it's been for decades. And if you're paying attention, as I've been paying attention, I'm, I'm no genius when it comes to boxing. I'm not claiming to be a genius. I know boxing. Don't get it twisted. I have boxing knowledge. I'm no dummy in boxing. I'm not claiming to be a boxing genius. I'm just somebody who pays attention. <laughs> and I'm somebody of a certain age who's lived through several different eras. And if you're paying attention, you live through these errors, you'll notice the signs. And I'm telling you, there are going to be huge upsets in the heavyweight division. Wilder, Joshua Fury, these guys are all going to lose if they continue to fight. For another three, four, five, six years, all of these guys are going to lose. And at least one or two of them, I want to say at least two of them, are going to lose fights which come totally out of the blue. Fights which you never imagined they could lose. You wait and see. Drop your comments in the comment section below. Let me know how you feel. It's happening. I'm out. Join me on Patreon. I upload a minimum of two podcasts every single week, covering a wide variety of controversial topics, as well as live stream Q&A sessions. Take a look on screen right now at some of the podcasts I've produced so far. For just $3 a month, the equivalent of about £2 a month, you get access to all my new podcasts and my entire back catalogue of past podcasts, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen on your computer or on your smartphone or tablet by downloading the Patreon app from the Google Play Store or the App Store for free. The Patreon app also allows you to download each podcast in MP3. For less than the price of a cup of coffee, you get access to dozens of hours of exclusive content. It's easy to sign up, there's no contract, and you can cancel at any time. So come and join our community of free and critical thinkers by signing up with me here on Patreon today.